I'm not a scientist, uh, but I really do like scientists, and I really do like Georgian Bay, where I've been cottaging for about 14 years. Like I said, I've been involved with the frag fight for uh, over a year, and I've roped absolutely all my family members into it, and as many as friends as I could. So today I'm going to share with you what I've learned, and I would really like you to add in. I mean, this is supposed to be a discussion uh, where you see appropriate. That's me uh, with my son doing some fragging. So I'm just going to talk about identification. Uh, this is a bit of an eye chart, but some of the sources that I've used are Michigan State University, and I've also talked to Lynn Short, who's a horticulturist who's very active in Wimblewood Beach area. And today we're going to talk to stem color, we're going to talk to leaf persistence, leaf color, ligule length, like what the heck is a ligule, lower gloom length, density, a little bit about the growing season, and a little bit about when Phragmites are young. This is a very fuzzy slide, but this is one, as I started on my Phragmites journey, that I created my, for myself, for my own blog, and for GBF. The differences here is I'm also going to talk a little bit about height, seed heads, and stem breakdown, and that wasn't sort of in the, the Michigan State one. But um, this is a picture, I mean, mo most people in terms of identification want to know the difference between non-native and the native variety. And what I will say is, typically what you're probably going to find is the non-native variety. There is very, very kind of little of the native variety, if that, that gives you some kind of um, help. And usually people like to know, you know, the difference between the two, although rarely are you going to see the two together. In terms of um, color stems and persistence, the leaf sheaths of uh, non-native Phragmites tend to cling very tightly, covering the dull stems, so the stuff here at the bottom. So the leaf sheaths tend to, to cling very tightly as they grow up. Um, whereas the non-native, or, or whereas the native variety, the leaves sort of at the lower end and just generally tend to fall off a little bit more easily, if that makes sense. And even on the stem here on the native variety, the leaf sheath starts to disappear and what you start to see here is a shiny red color that um, happens when it interacts with the sunlight. So there's a couple of differences here. I guess the other thing that I should point out is non-native Phragmites have these creepy kind of tentacle type things that I call stolons. Stolons are a way for the plant to reproduce, so they're like these above ground runners. Yeah, that. Uh, seek out from the plant and seek out other ways and they can grow like to 30 or 40 feet long. They're like tentacle light things that go out and if they separate and get chopped up, each one can kind of grow an individual plant on its own. Sometimes they can be red as well, which is a bit confusing, but generally on the uh, non-native variety what you're looking for is tan stems. And then also with Phragmites underneath the ground they have rhizomes which um, are kind of the same thing but underground that do the same thing. It's, it's quite an amazing plant. Another really, and I think you've probably seen this everywhere, kind of obvious way to identify non-native Phragmites is you can still see them kind of standing in the winter. Winter's actually a great time to look for Phragmites stands because typically a Phragmites stand consists of a lot of dead stems. And because the non-native variety doesn't break down very easily, you'll see a lot standing up, even in the winter, whereas the native variety, you might see the odd little stem sticking up, but not you know, that kind of much thatch. So the slide says, last year's growth breaks down very slowly, resulting in a buildup of dense thatch, which inhibits the growth of other species. So that's a really good way to identify it. And it's, it's, it's pretty easy, I would say, to identify a, frag, a Phragmite stand kind of based on, on the thatch that's there of a mature one. And here's just an example. It's hard to see here, but Lynn Short took this in her area. There was native Phragmites here, and she said it was very hard to find native Phragmites. She found it in one little area, but it broke down much more um, than the uh, invasive kind. Native Phragmites have less dense growth. So what you're going to see, and again, it's a, it's a good way to kind of identify Phragmites, is to kind of look at the situation in context. Um, you should see within native Phragmites, you might see other native species mixed in. And again, I want to allude to the red shiny segments on the stems. So you'll start to see a little bit of other native species mixed in. So where in the native variety, you might 
you would probably see some intermixing with other types of plants. And I think David alluded to this before. In the non-native variety, especially as it matures, what you're going to start seeing is nothing but the invasive kind. It becomes this monoculture where you just see nothing but that type of plant. So it's a good way to uh, be able to identify it. So density, uh, which we've also uh, basically alluded to, but in the non-native variety, obviously you're going to see a, just a ton of density, um, 200 stems per minute or per minute per uh, square meter when it gets kind of mature. So it gets very tight, and that's why nothing. It's very hard for anything to live in there. It becomes almost like a virtual um, dead zone. And the native variety does not grow quite that densely. So, like I said, it might be more sparsely spread out. Leaf color. So the non-native variety, um, the leaves. And again, I find this to be a very hard identification feature. I will be honest with you, but the non-native variety tend to be more bluish gray green and the native variety tend to be a little bit more yellowish green. The leaves might be a little bit narrower, and I mean this is only if you're going to see them side by side, which I think is going to be rare, but uh, the native kind might have a little bit thinner leaves. The non-native variety might have a bit thicker leaves. The non-native variety might have a leaf that falls at a 45 degree angle, where the native variety is more apt to be at a 30 degree angle, but it's not like you won't see non-native uh, leaves at 30 degree angles. But there's a little bit in leaf color, and I, I suggest you use all of these different characteristics together. Ligules, okay, so ligules are a narrow strap shaped part of um, the plant. It's kind of a thin membranous scale um, that kind of happens on the inner side of the leaf sheet at its junction with the base. So that is kind of confusing, and I'll show you a couple more slides that might help. But basically, what we're looking at is, um, this is where it kind of connects with the leaf sheet. And in native Phragmites, um, what you'll see is that they're a little bit wider. See, all we're talking about is this little part here. And in non-native Phragmites, they're a little bit narrower. So here's a more graphic representation of that. I don't know if you can see this yellow from way back there, but here's the non-native variety, which shows that it's supposed to have a thicker ligule, and see that's where the leaf is kind of coming out. And in the native variety, you can see that it's much thicker. That's, that's the length of it. Uh, so Phragmite seed heads, they have kind of many different branches. Each branch has a number of spikelets. Each spikelet includes a number of florets. But at the base of the, each spikelet are two bracts called glooms. So those are glooms, those things, those two little spikes of those are bracts. That's called a uh, gloom. So the non-native variety is smaller, while the native variety is bigger. Here's another picture of that just to show you, as you're looking at these things, what that might look like. So that's the non-native, and that's the native uh, variety. So again, the non-native Phragmites, and I had a big plant, and it's out there, and I'll bring it back in, but they tend to have kind of a thicker seed head. Um, this is it when it's starting to kind of emerge, probably around in mid-August, and they tend to be, they, not always, but often they're kind of a purplish color, and they tend to get into these bigger seed heads. And this is just another example showing you where the short blooms are as part of the seed head. Whereas native Phragmites, first of all, their flowering occurs earlier, so that's, that's actually a good way to identify native Phragmites, because their flowering doesn't occur kind of in mid-August. Uh, early to mid-August, theirs kind of occurs sort of at the beginning of July, end of June. And they tend to have a sparser seed head, and like I said, the longer glooms. And you can see that the flower, although it's not fully open, it has, it's, it's less prolific. Now we get to one of the hardest um, things to identify in terms of native and non-native Phragmites is actually when they're younger. Because at first glance, when they're younger, the new invasions of invasive Phragmites can very much resemble a mature population of the native Phragmites, so if that makes sense. In other words, when they're young, uh, native Phragmites can be short, 
They can be widely spread out, so it can look like they're, you know, interspersed and they don't have that density that you would typically associate. The problem is, is that it's much better to get <laughs> invasive Phragmites when they're younger because that doesn't allow for all that underground growth to really start to develop. Um, so you want to try to identify them when they're younger and get them when they're younger because that's easier to deal with. So some ways, although it's very difficult sometimes and to identify, is to understand that the native variety are probably going to have seed heads, whereas a young Phragmites isn't going to. So that's one um, identifier. And the other thing is um, just look a bit to the stems. So as they grow up, if the stems is still that st that tan color, and the other kind of Phragmites are have that red at the shiny parts of the red, then they're probably the native varietal. The best time to take Phragmites out is actually from mid-July to mid-August, and that's when all of the energy of the plant moves up from its extensive root system, or a lot of it does, and is trying to make the, the, the plant actually flower. So it's then that we kind of cut it off at its base, where the roots are weakened, and we hope the roots that weakens them a bit more, that's the time that we advocate. And before the seed head is like ready to disperse all its seeds, basically. And so these are just a couple of more pictures that I think can help you. If you ever see a native Phragmites, and believe me, this was an ecologist who was telling me that she could only find it in one area that she's sort of seen. But this is what native Phragmites kind of look like. Uh, this is Phragmites in Whit Bay at different times. So this is in, in my cottage uh, territory. So this was a young stand. You can see there's, it, it hasn't grown so tall and it's still manageable in terms of uh, going in for me to do a cut. There's no seed heads yet. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like in seed density. But this is one where I captured this in late fall. So we talked a little bit about rhizomes. I just wanted to show you kind of what they look like, kind of what the rhizomes start to look like. And they're all underground. Little pieces of these, if they get, you know, churned up, they can actually sprout new plants in other places. But this is what they kind of look like. So I think I've, I've talked this to death, but, you know, you need to use many different identification measures. Um, it, it is, it can be daunting. Like, I was very nervous about going out last year after a similar talk like this and trying to identify it. Uh, and we're going to talk about mapping later on. Once you start getting into it, first of all, you're going to see it everywhere, which is very frustrating. Uh, and um, you're going to get more confident as you do it. And trust me, probably 99% of what you're seeing is the invasive kind. And what's the magic of doing all of this? Well, uh, I wish I had the before picture. And I think that's a really important thing to do is take a before picture. But these beaches were absolutely riddled with Phragmites. And what Lynn was so excited about was um, after you know, a year and then the next year, we're starting to see some of the native plants coming back. And um, the biodiversity that a lot of us have talked about today can be restored, it will come back. So this is a quick check and um, I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna follow up with lots of information to you guys, but I think if you're out there, what you really wanna check for are all the stems, so in these kind of mature populations, dull tan, or are they red and shiny? So come June and July, that's a good way to check. Are the leaves green or blue-green? I find that less helpful <laughs> um, because you'd need to have them side by side. But Phragmites does tend to be bluish-green. Do the This one is a good one, so it's about the breakdown. Do the stems persist over several years or break down quickly? So like we talked about, usually with, at least with the mature Phragmites, you're gonna see a lot of the kind of thatch still kind of sticking up and dense, whether it's in winter, it'll stay up through the winter, um, or in the summer, because a lot of the live stands contain, you know, 60 to, I think it's like 70% of a dead, dead batch. Um, is this a new or mature population? Do most stems have seed heads? So this speaks a little bit um, to, you know, the, when they're young problems. So. If they're scattered come June or July, but they have sort of seed heads that are starting to flower, then they're the native. Um, if they don't have seed heads and they're scattered and young, then they're going to be the invasive kind. How wide are the legules? So that is very sophisticated. 
Um, but if you if you do go that route, you can look at the ligules and um, also uh, the gloom length. Another really great reference is, of course, the Michigan State University uh, reference, Phragmites native versus non-native. Once you start doing this, you're going to find it easier to identify. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be very hard to find native Phragmites. And I think I was telling somebody, after all of looking at all this identification, um, and you're still not sure, I think the reality is you should consider removing it if you you know, are concerned because it's going to be much easier to replant a native, native Phragmite than to try to control a manifestation of, of the, the non-native variety.